Perfect. Hey y'all, it's your girl Nick, and I'm out here in the garden. And yes, I'm also out here in a swimsuit because it's 200 degrees outside. And this is what I do in the summertime when it's super hot and I have work to do. Um, it's pretty late, but it's still very hot. So yes, I have my swimsuit on and I keep it clean for the kids. This is the one piece. Um, the back's out, yes, but that's not really a big deal. Um, and I'm protected. I have on full sunscreen, of course, my big brown sun hat and my glasses, which are transition. So that will protect me from UV light. I'll take my hat off in a minute so y'all can see my face. But the reason I'm out here is because this work to do in the garden. As you guys know, there have been um, multiple storms in the Houston area. And I'm out here trying to clean things up because we have to start over essentially. And that's what I want to share with you guys. Multiple weeks ago, I said that I had a video that I put out and I said that I wanted to do a series, not, not necessarily a series, but just a video on the top five things to consider when you want to start a garden. So that's what today's video is all about. And many of them are not what you expect. So let's go through them. And I'm gonna count down from number five down to number one, the number one thing to consider when you want to start a garden. Number five, the fifth most important thing to consider if you wanna start a garden is aesthetics. What do I mean by that? How it looks, what you want it to look like. You can make your garden any kind of way you want to. Right now, it's really a popular thing to do um, raised beds that um, are metal. Um, some people are doing wooden raised beds that are painted all nice and pretty. We started out with, like I said, these two raised beds over here. Let me step out and show you. This one and this one. And they were made out of wood over a little bit in the drizzle <laughs> you can see a little bit of the wood there um and they were very pretty that was reclaimed wood from our deck that we tore out that's how we started out but i live in a very heavily controlled hoa community and we didn't want to have to go through having to ask what's okay to use and what's not okay to use we knew we couldn't do galvanized planters because we also live lakeside as you can see which means that everyone can see right into our backyard so it means that the hoa can regulate what we do in our backyard didn't want to have to go through all of that so that's where the bricks came in. I decided to canvas my neighbors. I built my garden, by the way, for only the cost of seeds and dirt. I did not pay for any of the materials. Like I said, I used reclaimed wood originally, and then I canvassed my neighborhood and my neighbors who donated all of these bricks. Some of the bricks were left over from the home when it was built. The rest of the bricks, were donated by neighbors and people in neighboring communities. So doing it this way, we didn't have to worry so much with what the HOA had to say. It blends in with our home, very aesthetically pleasing. Um, like I said, right now things are a little bit of a mess because it has been, you know, we had a tornado a few weeks ago and right now, um, actually earlier this week, we had hurricane, hurricane barrel come through and then today we were trying to hurry and clean things up because we had more severe weather coming through. So aesthetics can be whatever you want in your garden. Aesthetics are important, but they're the least important thing on this list. Unless, like I said, you live in a very heavily regulated subdivision where you have rules that you have to abide by. The fourth most important thing to consider if you want to start a garden is functionality. We're here in our front yard because I have expanded the garden into the front yard. Um, 
at a point I was growing potatoes in this bed because they grew up like shrubs. These are sweet potato vines. And yes, there are sweet potatoes in the ground where those vines are, same over there. Because again, we have to be very, very smart about how we grow because of the HOA. I have expanded into this garden back behind these shrubs because no one can see what's growing back behind there except us when we're sitting there. And in just a second, I'm gonna take you around there so you can see. But from the street, you can't tell that there's anything going on back there at all. So, this brings us to that functionality piece. Up here, I don't grow nearly as much. And you can excuse all the mess because I have had to move things to prepare for um, severe weather today or rainy weather today. And I always put my plants out where they can get access to the rainwater. They're normally up closer to the door. But this is our front porch and this is what's behind those bushes that I was showing you from that other side over there. No one can see this back here, but I don't grow a ton up here. Only things that I don't have to tend to a lot because it is actually in ground, which I don't do in the backyard because gardening is exercise. Even my doctor said so. And when you garden in the ground, there's a lot of bending, there's a lot of stooping, there's a lot of, you know, when you're gonna get down in there, you gotta get down on your knees or, you know, basically do a modified squat and there's a lot of reaching and pulling. When it's in the ground, there's a lot more work to actually do this versus in the back. Where we have raised beds. They are slightly elevated, but that slight elevation gives us a chance to use things like stools to sit on and we can bend over into the very you know front part of the bed and there's not quite as much you know squatting and there's still a ton of reaching but if i can sit on this stool I'm now sitting on this stool, it's much easier for me to reach. If you're elderly or you have some type of impaired mobility, this is a better option. And even raised beds that are very high, like they come up to say waist level, those are even better because there's literally no stooping, no you know, reaching and pulling. You can have something that sits out, um, say, in the middle of a space so that you could walk all the way around it. So there's no reaching and you can still pretty much grow anything in a bed like that. And last but not least is container gardening. So not everybody, first of all, has the room for a full on garden in their backyard. Not everybody has a backyard. You may live in an apartment or a condo or just not have a ton of space. That's where container gardening can come in. As you can see, I have some seedlings coming up over here. Um, and, you know, I have containers in multiple different places so that I can move them. Some of them are for um, companion planting and I want them to be able to move them around from one spot in the garden to another spot in the garden then um, some of them are just items that don't do well in our full sun or they don't do well in shade which we don't really have a ton of and those are factors that we will talk about later on in this list but that's where container gardening can be really beneficial and pretty much anything that you can grow in the ground or in a raised bed you can grow in a container so that is the fourth most important thing to consider when you want to start a garden is functionality. And that brings us to the middle of the pack. The third most important thing to consider when you want to start a garden is what you're gonna grow. 
Best thing I can tell you here is to grow what you love to eat. Grow what you love to eat because otherwise you're gonna grow, <laughs> grow really tired of working on growing things that you don't love, whether it's flowers, herbs, vegetables, grow what you love and that makes it very easy to come out and tend to your garden because you really have to do it every day if possible um, sometimes weather does not permit but you have to make the effort to get into your garden every day first of all it's good for you it's good for your mental health it's great for the soul um, and it's great exercise so consider what you will grow um, if you're growing mostly for herbs grow up herbs that you really like and then research them make sure that they will not take over your garden for example we just talked about container gardening um one thing that i always grow in containers is mint because mint can very easily take over you would think you know that little bit of mint would just stay contained in the one area where you plant it but no it will grow and grow and grow and completely take over an area and deplete other plants of the nutrients that they need. Oregano is another one that will just creep and it's beautiful, it's delicious, but if you don't keep it contained, it will, again, just spread and grow like mad. I've had things like um, chives grow out of control. One year I had parsley grow out of control. Um, the sage, actually, that I was speaking about earlier, I still need to come out here and cut some of these leaves off of here. I mean, look, they're just, they're just, <laughs> they've fallen over from the weight of the water. Um, and, you know, they've got some little, some disease or pest issues, but this could easily take over if I don't continue to cut it back. So, grow what you love, but some things just know that you need to keep them contained so that they don't take over your garden and further to that subject of growing what you love or what you will grow is how you will grow it what I mean by that is do you plan to start with seeds as I did with this cantaloupe or do you plan to buy starts as I did with a shishito pepper over there. Um, I always grow from seed because it's less expensive to use seeds. And then once you grow something once, you can grow it forever because you can allow it to go to flower and then collect the seeds from that and you will have seeds to continue growing for season after season after season and you will have seeds to share with other people so decide how um, you want to start things do you want to start your own plants using seeds or do you want to start your plants from starts that you buy at a garden center or a nursery and now we come to the top thing the number one thing to consider when you want to start a garden and that is Location, location, location. Why is that so important? Because your plants need special things. They have special requirements. Um, some plants need full sun, like this olive tree here. Some plants um, can take some shade, uh, like lettuces and greens. Other plants cannot take the heat of the summer sun, such as, you know, true lettuces. This right here is a lettuce mix. And you can see I have it like shielded back here. It's warm enough to, it gets enough light here, but, and it's warm enough to germinate and to continue growing, but it cannot take this Texas heat, that sun that beats down peppers my pepper pepper farm i call it my pepper farm over there peppers love the heat so those do great my backyard is in full sun pretty much at all times now that my neighbor's tree has gotten bigger 
it kind of shades this area a little bit in the afternoon. I have to keep that in mind when I'm planting over there. The way our home is situated, that portion of the garden gets morning shade. I have to keep that in mind whenever I'm planting out, sowing my seeds or planting out starts over in that section of the garden. Everything else, everything from here all the way down is in full sun at all times, including the containers right there on the um, edges of the patio. They are constantly in full sun. So I can't expect to plant, say, brassicas over there where they will be in full sun at any time of the year. I mean, now we've been getting freezes every four years, which is unheard of for Houston, Texas. But, you know, it's been, it worked last year to grow brassicas, but that was the first time I was able to do that because we did get, you know, freezing weather for a bit of a period of time. I was able to grow brassicas in this area, not a ton, but enough that I was happy that it worked. So normally, you know, there are people growing cabbages right now. I can't grow cabbages because all of this is in full sun and those brassicas cannot take the heat of the summer. That's why location is so important. Let's go back up to that front bed because the same thing applies there. Back up front, you know, things here, anything that I plant here, like I said, I have potatoes along the back of this. Um, this is my Christmas tree. Let me back up and see if I can show you this. This is my Christmas tree, one of them. The other one is that big one on that side. But back behind this Christmas tree is where I had the main, like they were red potatoes right here. And they did well there because it was partially shaded by the Christmas tree during some parts of the day. So it wasn't so hot. And then over here, this bed gets morning light from the southeast. So it's heavy light, but it's not that searing afternoon sunshine. So I can grow a little bit more up here. Also, with these, with these hedges here, it kind of helps to insulate whatever's planted back behind. So I can grow a little bit more up here that, you know, can take a little more things that can't take the super hot heat of the Texas sun in the afternoons because this only gets morning sun and is then completely shaded in the afternoon. So you guys, that's about it for today's video. I really do hope that you found this list of things to consider when you um, want to start a garden beneficial. This is, these are things that I wish some of the gardening channels had done when I was starting because everything was, there was some great information out there, but it was much more high level. The, um, these things are like fundamentals beyond just plant health. They're fundamentals to how your garden will work, how your ecosystem will work. And you guys, I'm so sorry for the sun. It's beating down out here. And this is why I say, listen, I'm gonna put my hat back on. This is why I say it's important to protect yourself, to protect your skin because melanoma is not sexy. Like we gotta take care of ourselves. So on the hat goes, back on the glasses go. I'm still protected by my sunscreen, but yes, I really wish that this was something. These were things that were told to me. It just happened to work out for me because this is the way that our home is built. This is the way that our yard is um, situated. So it worked out. However, these are things that you will want to consider, especially the um, aesthetics part, because if you live in a heavy, heavily regulated HOA, that can really, really affect how you grow you can't do the pretty raised beds that are planted all nice i'm sorry painted all nice and that have um 
or a metal or all the things you can't do all of that especially like me when you live lakeside you see my yard is open to everyone so unfortunately fortunately and unfortunately it's beautiful but the hoa can at any time say hey that's not acceptable we don't like it so um not necessarily we don't like it there's bylaws and all the things we knew that when we moved in so my point to that is i hope that you guys found this um helpful and if you are on the fence about starting a garden just know that even with the trials and tribulations even with some some years you have to start over some years you have natural disasters like we have had this year two in a row and you do have to like you know succession plant or plan for you know a second planting if you live in an area that has a long growing season that's not really a problem just get it done right so this was meant to encourage you and to give you the tools you need to get started because that's the hardest part just getting started so as i've said i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope that it gives you some encouragement to get started notice one thing i did not include in this list was cost the reason is because you can start a garden with any amount of money literally you can be free if you can convince someone to um, give you their dirt or give you um, some wood chips or give you their compost. It can be, I started my initial garden for uh, around $20 until it came down to the soil, which I learned a very hard lesson about, but that's you know that's the conversation for another video um the moral of that story is don't buy bagged soil from big box stores you will go broke trying to fill a garden with that stuff but i digress you can start a garden for next to nothing hours cost nothing to start other than the dirt or you can spend thousands and thousands and thousands literally of dollars on the garden of your dreams it just depends on your budget and what direction you want to go. So cost was not included in that. Also because all of these other factors, aesthetics, functionality, how you will grow, what you will grow, how you will grow, and the location, all of those things also factor into the cost. So I did not include that here. If you want to talk more about the cost of a garden, I have several videos where I've talked about it, you know, in some capacity, but I can do a deep dive into that. If you're interested, just let me know in the comments or shoot me a message. But other than that, that's it for this video. I really hope that, you know, you feel encouraged to start a garden, if nothing else, but for the many benefits to your mind, your body, your soul, and of course, eating fresh, organic food straight from your yard or straight from your patio. Anyway, you guys, thank you again for tuning in. I appreciate you always stopping by the fourth house on the right. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And I hope you will subscribe and come back to visit me again, especially as I'm rebuilding the garden. That's the whole point of me doing this video today is because I'm having to start things over because of the damage done specifically to the plants, not the garden itself, but to the plants from the tornado three weeks ago and Hurricane Barrel earlier this week. So follow along in case you've missed my other videos where I expanded and you know started the garden from scratch. Um, no dig, no till. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can follow along with the process of rebuilding the garden. Thanks again, you guys. Until next time, bye.